Hello, and welcome to Up to Speed with Online Teaching. My name is Jonathan Haber. I've been sorting through hundreds of documents and websites put together by state departments of education, academic associations, and other educators to help teachers with a rapid move to distance education during the coronavirus crisis. To save you from having to do the same, I've tried to distill their advice into 10 key points. Number one, don't panic. Teaching in ways you didn't plan to or using tools and technologies you might not be familiar with is gonna be challenging and even nerve wracking at times. But keep in mind that everyone, students, parents, fellow teachers and administrators, in fact, everyone in the country wants you to succeed. We're all being in this together means you're not alone. Number two, remember that distance learning is not the same as online learning. People have been learning at a distance for over 100 years using technologies like the Postal Service, radio, television, now the internet. So there's no one way to teach and learn at a distance. Internet-based teaching tools are great and there may be many at your disposal, but don't assume you're only teaching properly if everything you do is online. Number three, understand your audience. No one knows your students better than you do, their attention span, who needs extra help or enrichment, what engages them, and who might be struggling with learning from home. Build that knowledge into your practice for delivering learning at a distance. You'll discover very quickly who is responding to your choices on how to teach and who might be struggling, especially since distance learning may be new to most of your students. Make sure you've got a flexible plan that maximizes the chances that you'll reach all learners. Number four, define your goals. You had learning goals going into the semester before the pandemic forced everyone to teach and learn from home. While you can maintain or modify those goals, they should be completely clear to both you and your students. The only way they and you will get anywhere is for everyone to know where they're going. Number five, focus on pedagogy, not technology. Technology can support what you want to do and how you want to teach. Make sure you understand the what and the how before selecting tools and methods for instruction. And never lose sight of the why, why you're doing everything you're doing, which is help all students accomplish their learning goals. Number six, start simple. If you already interact with students through a learning management system, maybe you just want to stick with what everyone's already using and just replace classroom lectures with video, live or recorded. Once you're comfortable with that, you may want to start leveraging discussion boards and online assessment tools already built into your LMS to expand on what's working. But you might want to just start by running your course by email, correspondence school-like, which can also be effective, especially in situations where many students don't have access to computers or internet connections that let them run applications such as online video. Remember again that there's no one correct way to teach at a distance, so if you're new to educational technology, start with what you're comfortable with and build from there. Number seven, get the support you need. School districts, state, academic association, colleges and universities have been rapidly publishing guides to help support teachers, families, and students at this time of crisis. Companies are making many tools available for free and teachers struggling with the same challenges you are facing are eager to support each other. Tap into those resources, reach out to colleagues, and don't be afraid to ask for the help and support you need. Number eight, interact. Teaching is not a one-way street, so give students a chance to participate. This could take the form of online video discussion if you're comfortable with working this way, but students can also interact via discussion boards, online polls delivered during class, or even email. And don't forget that students need to put their learning to work. So now is the time to create interesting and challenging assessments and assignments that give students work they could do on their own or with fellow students, activities designed to provide you the evidence that learning is taking place. Number nine, be patient with everybody, including yourself. You're going to make mistakes and get frustrated, and that's natural given the circumstances. But now is the time to be forgiving of students who might not get it at first, of parents who might send one too many email requests, and especially of yourself if everything doesn't go as planned. Number 10, change course if necessary and innovate if you like. Something isn't working, change it. If a tech tool isn't serving your students, stop using it. If you learn about a method or tool that might help out, give it a try, but be ready to throw it out if it's not doing its job. This is a time for experimentation, not rigidity. And once you're in the groove, you might discover some innovative ways of teaching you haven't thought of before that serve everyone well. I've compiled a set of resources that address each of these 10 points at this web address, and you can find more online. So keep up the great work, find the help you need, and remember that lots of us have your back.